There are two ways to get your data from Excel into a SharePoint list, copy and paste or automatically with a Power Automate flow. If you are using Excel for Windows, you do have a third option, which is export table to SharePoint list. I'll only be covering the first two methods in this video. The copy and paste method is one of the easier ways to get your Excel data into a SharePoint list. Before you get started, it's best to have your column order in Excel match the column order in SharePoint and have your data formatted. This way you can select all the data in Excel and paste it directly into your SharePoint list. For a multi-choice column, separate each choice with a semicolon. For a person column, enter each person's name or email address separated by a semicolon as well. If you are entering a person's name, it must be entered exactly as it's stored in the user's directory. Personally, I'd recommend using the user's email address instead to avoid any errors. If you have a date column, make sure your date is formatted in this format. You can adjust the date format in Excel by selecting the column or columns, right-clicking and choosing Format Cells. Select Custom and enter the appropriate date format and press OK. By formatting your data, SharePoint can interpret it correctly when it's pasted into your SharePoint list. Now that my Excel data has been formatted, I'll copy it to my clipboard. In SharePoint, click on Edit in Grid View. Paste your data immediately after pressing the Edit in Grid View button. Occasionally, this doesn't work. Use the right arrow key to select the next cell and the left arrow key to navigate back to the first cell and try again. Do not insert your cursor into a cell, otherwise this can happen. If you accidentally insert your cursor into a cell, press the escape key and try to paste your data again. Press exit in grid view to save your changes. Although the copy and paste method can be an easy way to get your Excel data into SharePoint, it's manual and can be time consuming with a chance for human error. By using a Power Automate flow, you can easily map the data into the correct SharePoint columns regardless of the column order in Excel while also validating and transforming your data during the transfer process. The automated method may take a bit more time upfront to set up. However, if you find yourself needing to import data from Excel into a SharePoint list often, this method will save you a ton of time in the long run. Before creating the flow, we'll need to format the data in Excel into a table. Select a single cell in your data set and from the Home tab, select Format as Table. Converting your data into a table can be automated, which I will cover in a different video. If possible, use email addresses instead of names for the person column data. In Power Automate, create an instant cloud flow. Give your flow a name and select the manual trigger. Next, add a list rows present in a table action. We'll use this action to get the data from the table in our Excel file. Select your SharePoint site, Document Library, File, and Table. If you only want to import specific data into your SharePoint list, use the filter query. I'm going to set my top count to 1 while we're building the flow to limit the number of rows returned. Ensure you select ISO 8601 as the date time format to avoid any errors in your flow if you have dates and times in your Excel data. Add and apply to each action. We'll use this action to loop through each row of the Excel table. Insert the value dynamic content here. We'll need to translate the data for the columns in our SharePoint list that accept multiple values. The assigned to column is a person column that allows for multiple values. And the project category column is a choice column that also allows multiple values. Add a select action. Insert the assigned team member's dynamic content into the From field. Click on three dots and select Peak Code. Copy the content between the at symbol and the closing quote mark to your clipboard. Add an expression. Insert the split function and paste the content from your clipboard. Add a comma and single quotes. Since the email addresses are separated by a semicolon and a space, enter that between the single quotes. In the key field, Enter the word claims with a capital C. For the value, we'll use an expression. Enter the item function. Let's give that a test. Add another select action. Insert the project category dynamic content into the from field. Click on the three dots and select peak code. Copy the content between the at symbol and the closing quote mark to your clipboard. Add an expression. Insert the split function and paste the content from your clipboard. Add a comma and single quotes. Just like my email addresses above, the project categories are also separated by a semicolon and a space. Enter that between the single quotes. 
In the key field, enter the word value with a capital V. For the value, we'll insert an expression. Enter the item function. Run a test. Add a create item action. Select your site and list name. I'll insert the project name into the title field. Next, I'll insert the description into the description field and the start and end dates into their respective fields. For the assign to claims, click this icon and insert the assign to select action output here. The project status choice column holds a single value. Click the drop down and select enter custom value. Insert the project status dynamic content here. For the project category value, click the icon and insert the project category select action output. The flow is ready to be tested. In my SharePoint list, you can see that the item was successfully created. In order to import the rest of the Excel table data into SharePoint, I'll remove the top count and enter a one into the skip count field since the first row of the table has already been added to SharePoint. Run another test. This flow took 12 seconds to run. Each of these actions need to run one after the other for each row of the Excel table. Click on the three dots and select settings. Click on this toggle to enable concurrency control. I'll leave the default value at 20. Now the apply to each action will run up to 20 instances at once, improving the performance of the flow. Let's run a test and compare the total time it takes to run with the concurrency control turned on versus the previous run where it was turned off. I'll clear my SharePoint list and remove the skip count. This flow only took three seconds to run, saving nine seconds overall. My data set is very small with only 17 items. Imagine how much time you could save with a large data set. Depending on your workflow, you can replace the manual trigger with a recurrence trigger or a for a selected file trigger. Adjust this flow to suit your needs. Keep in mind that the list rows present in a table action does require you to specify a file and a table within that file. In a different video, I'll show you how to use dynamic content so that you don't need to hard code the file name and table in this action. What other tasks are you looking to automate? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any other Power Automate Flow tutorials. Thanks for watching.